Okay, so we left off on the antigen phase, which is the growth phase, and about 90% of your hair is in the antigen phase. Um, it's important to know when I, because I know it gets confusing with how in some people it lasts three to five years, but in others, 10 years. This can happen in any um, culture, in any particular person. This is determined by your genes. Um, as well as your environment because um, if you're under a stressful situation over long periods of time that can cause your antigen phase to switch over to the um, resting phase. It's important to know that some people um, just get really lucky, they have a naturally good head of hair. Um, so products that claim to um, make hair grow, um, take that for a grain of salt and try your own caution. Typically um, when I went back to my point about you want your hair as healthy as it can be, this is also because of the antigen phase. So if someone has a naturally shorter antigen phase, they may not be able to get hair that is down to the floor. Um, but with the you know invention of modern technology like extensions, you can actually use that service um, to help them achieve what they want. So the next phase is going to be the catagen phase. This is going to be the brief transitioning between growth and the resting phase. This will signal the end of the antigen phase. It will cause a shrinkage. During this phase, the follicle will shrink and detach from the dermal papilla, so that nerve and blood supply get cut off. So what happens is the follicle will lose its nourishment. Um, what happens is the hair bulb disappears and the shrunken root end forms a rounded club. Less than 1% of scalp hair is in the catagen phase at any time. Um, and the catagen phase is very short. It will last about one to two weeks before it segues into the telogen phase. This is the resting phase the final phase of the um, hair cycle. This will um, cause the hair to shed, so that hair that has been cut off from the dermal papilla, and when it shrinks, it just goes whoop, right out. The hair is shed during the telogen phase or remains in place until the next antigen phase when new hair growing pushes it out. So this is why, um, I know it gets confusing when it words like that, Hair is either shed, you know, by natural, like if it's a windy day, it might shed it, or if you're um, shampooing someone, someone who doesn't wash their hair a lot, you shed a few hairs a day, um, as the numbers vary. But what could happen is um, it, the oil might trap it in there, and that, you know, manipulation, that massage in the water may um, dislodge the hair that is ready shed. Also, if another hair is in there, it'll bump it right out there, and that will cause it to shed out. You'll typically see this when you're doing hair extensions. So when you're doing hair extensions like tapins or all that, when you tape hair like this, it's gonna keep the hair in place. So any hair that is shed is gonna be caught in there. So that's why when you're removing extensions, it looks like they're really losing a lot of hair. Technically they're not. It's just that all the hair that got trapped in there um, was stuck from the adhesive. About 10% of the hair on the scalp is in the telogen phase or the resting phase. The telogen phase will last um, three to six months. As soon as the telogen phase ends, the hair returns to the growth phase and the cycle starts all over again. On average, the cycle repeats itself once every four to five years. So know that there are different types of growth patterns. Um, you know, this will you know it'd be important when you're cutting hair, coloring hair. Hair follicles usually do not grow out of the hair at a perpendicular 90 degree angle or in a straight direction. Um, when they do, they result in growth patterns known as hair streams, whorls, and cowlicks. Um, now about some of the myths, uh, truth about hair growth. So one of the first myths is that shaving hair um, and cutting the hair on a head makes it grow back faster and coarser. I've seen a lot of people tell um, other people that when they have a baby, shave the head, it grows back faster. You technically don't want to do that um, because it doesn't do anything. What happens there is when you're shaving the head or cutting the hair, you're taking the natural sharp end of the hair and you're slicing it off, so hair is going to be sliced. It's going to appear blunter and thicker. So think about how like when you um, razor cut hair, it feels a little coarse. That's because it's at a blunted, uh, it's a different edge. So it does not have an effect on, um, you know, how hair grows. What it does. What it does have an effect on um, is not the thickness, but when you blunt cut hair and hair is blunt, it makes the hair uniform. So as the hair grows, it grows at a better rate. Hair that is um, unchecked when it's not cut may have different lengths because um, different follicles have shed. Others are still growing. And that's why um, people that you know don't cut their hair may have an uneven um, area in their hair. Another myth is that scalp massage increases hair growth. While it feels amazing to have a scalp massage, it has not scientifically been proven. Um, but what it does help with is blood circulation. So you're circulating that blood, you're helping to deliver nutrients to that hair. There's only two FDA approved drugs, Medoxidil and Finasteride. Um, and it's important to know that the FDA um, regulates this. So products that claim to increase hair growth are, related, are regulated as drugs and not cosmetics. 
they'll should have a drug fact box on it if you ever use a scalp serum. One of the myths is that gray hair is coarser and more resistant to pigmented hair. Um, this claims that gray hair is just more noticeable. That is actually false. So this area right here, I always tell students to cross that box out because that is not true. Gray hair is um, structurally different than pigmented hair and there's enough research to back that up. One of the myths is that the natural curl is always determined by racial background and know that anyone of any different race could have different textures. Um, and the last myth, hair with a round cross section is straight, hair with an oval cross section is wavy, and hair with a flattened cross section is curly. Um, in general, cross sections of the hair are, are often round, and cross sections of wavy and curly hair tend to be more oval to flattened oval. And cross sections of extremely curly hair have a flattened cross section. We know that cross sections of the hair can be almost any shape, and the shape of the cross section does not always relate to the amount of curl or the shape of the follicle. Um, another important part is hair loss. Under normal circumstances, we all lose, we all lose hair. This is the next area we're going to talk about. I don't know why I just jumped like that. I'm sorry. It's been a long um, few weeks of just staying inside. I mean, not a few weeks, a few days of staying inside, but it feels like weeks. Um, hair loss is one of the biggest issues that we face in the salon. It is one of um, my biggest fears and a lot of other people's biggest fears. We all lose hair daily. Um, the average amount of the average person will lose about um, 100 to 150, but new research is showing that it's about 35 to 40. This is all very personal and it depends on a lot of things. You want to know that um, hair loss has a lot of um, emotional side effects. It is not always recognized as a medical condition, but it can cause a lot of psychological distress. There is research, um, if you ever read journals of psychology, social psychology, they've studied on um, the perception of baldness and they showed that the attitudes showed toward men that were bald, they were perceived as less physically attractive by both sexes, less attract, less assertive, less successful, less personally likable, and older by about five years. So they're perceiving bald men like this in a very negative way. They also had another study of how bald men perceive themselves um, and that showed that the greater the hair loss, it had a greater significant impact than moderate hair loss. Men with more severe hair loss experienced significantly more negative social and emotional effects are more preoccupied with their baldness and make some effort to conceal or compensate for hair loss. Abnormal hair loss is more common in men, um, but women may experience it. For women, it can also be just as devastating because studies will indicate that women have a greater that women have a greater emotional investment in their appearance. You know, they buy hair products, makeup products, um, typically more than men do, and they may think that they're the only one with this problem. They also tend to worry that the hair loss is a serious symptom, such as a serious illness, and they try to disguise it from everyone, including their doctors, which is usually a mistake. Because usually when you experience a great amount of hair loss, it's usually a sign that something's wrong and you have to determine what that is. They, it could even be a thyroid issue. I've had people that have been you know, feeling depressed and their hair is thinning. That's usually the first sign of a high thyroid issue. Um, in addition, certain disorders can cause that as well, uh, such as celiac disease. Over 63 million people in the United States suffer from abnormal hair loss, so if you are experiencing hair loss, know that you are not alone. As a professional stylist, um, you will technically be the first person that will see this, because usually a client is too embarrassed or too ashamed to bring this up, and this is a very sensitive issue. So if you see something, the, the way you want to bring it up is say, hey, you know, um, I've seen this in all other people, so they don't feel like they're alone, and say, are you noticing this one area is a little bit different, or is it growing indifferently? And usually you'll get a better response that way. And this is a chance to have a talk about them about what we can do differently. You can maybe style their hair in a different way. You can color it to try to conceal it. Certain types of um, perming techniques can actually conceal this as well. We now have extensions that we can use. So it's not the traditional um, 60s when they had to wear those horrible wigs. There's also certain treatments that um, different salon brands have that can help to plump the hair. There's also different types of abnormal hair loss. Um, one of them that I wanna bring um, up to you that is not in here is gonna be called telogen effluvigen. And I'm probably butchered that last part, but I think I said it right. Um, so telogen effluvigen is when you're very stressed. If you've been under a prolonged amount of stress, look at my hair loss video and I explained how I experience this. You tend to lose hair um, either in a patch so it will thin. That's um, because your body is so stressed, your hormones are crazy, and you're causing your hair follicles to be forced into a resting phase. That will cause an abnormal amount of shedding and when the stress is um, dealt with and you're able to cope with it, your body will return back to normal. So know that the technical term for hair loss is going to be called alopecia. Um, the three most common types of alopecia are alopecia, alopecia areata, and postpartum alopecia. So 
androgenic alopecia, which is the first kind, is going to be the loss that is characterized by um, the loss of terminal hair and the terminal hair being converted into vellus hair, the thinner hair. It is a result of age, genetics, hormonal changes. Androgenic alopecia is very common in men, and one of the um, enemies behind this is a chemical called DHT. That um, chemical suffocates the hair follicle, and they're looking into DHT blockers as being a way to fix this. So androgenic alopecia can begin as early as the teens, but it's frequently seen by age 40. By 35 years old, almost 40% of both men and women show some degree of hair loss. And in men, um, androgenic alopecia is also called male pattern baldness. It usually progresses to the familiar horseshoe-shaped fringe where people have around here. Um, in women, it shows up as a generalized thinning all over the entire crown area. And androgenic alopecia affects millions of men and women in the US. There's actually a um, foundation called the National Alopecia Areata Foundation, NAAF, and it's to find um, research. They give you the address right there. It's based out of California. It's a really cool company to research and look up. Alopecia areata, um, think of um, the last part of areata is area. That's gonna be caused by um, hair loss in different areas, and there's different um, theories for this. Some think it's an autoimmune disorder where your body is attacking the hair follicles, causing them to um, temporarily uh, die. And the white blood cells that are attacking it are causing the hair loss, and it's an unpredictable skin disease that affects an estimated 5 million people in the USA. Usually begins with one or more small, round, smooth, bald patch in the scalp, and it progresses into more, um, and it can progress into a total scalp and hair loss known as alopecia totalis. Alopecia totalis can happen, and that's going to be where you have um, no hair on your scalp. And then uh, alopecia universalis is where everything falls out. So people with alopecia universalis, um, they don't have any hair growing out of their eyebrows, eyelashes, mouth, everywhere is completely shed and void of hair. And alopecia, um, it occurs in males and females of all ages and races, and it usually begins in childhood. The scalp usually shows no obvious signs of inflammation, or skin disorder, or disease. It tends to be very clean, and there's just one big patch. The picture right there is a really good example um, of how it looks, and there can be different ways to um, conceal it. So there are, there's also postpartum alopecia, and this is going to be that when someone is pregnant. I know that a lot of pregnant women that are getting their hair done in the salon freak out about this. Um, everyone gets it differently. It, pregnancy will disrupt the cycle of hair, and I've had people that, and not to scare anyone, that have gone through pregnancy and their hair color will change, their whole texture will change. I've had a woman ask me a great question about why her perm lasted. It was a perm that never went away. Her husband that passed on was a hairdresser, gave her the best spiral perm she had. So after her spiral perm, she got pregnant and the perm never went away. That was because her hormones were changing and it actually affected her hair follicles. On the flip side, I've had heard of women that were getting pregnant and then their hair um, went to complete crap after. It shedded um, very frequently, it became very thin and never came back. The good news is that the growth cycle generally, for the most part, regulates which should you know hopefully quell any nerves that you've had about this and now it's important to talk about the different types of hair loss treatments there are different ways to treat hair loss um you know it's easy to tell someone just you know suck it up which doesn't do anything there's actually specific therapists that can help you with this if it is that severe um, because hair loss can cause ocd or can make anxiety a lot worse there's only two drugs one of them is minoxidil it's a topical solution that's applied to the surface of the body it's usually in a foam the, one of the brand names is Rogaine. There's also that new company called Keeps. By the way, Keeps and Rogaine are one and the same. Redken even has their own um, scalp solution that you'll put on there. It's at a higher percentage for men. Um, the regular strength is 2% and that and the 5% is extra strength. Typically 2% is used for women and 5% is used for men because they're worried about if any of the um, higher percentage on women goes outside of here can cause hair growth in the face, which there's conflicting research on that. With minoxidil, you have to keep using it. When you stop using it, you will lose whatever you've gotten, so you must keep applying it. Um, it is not known to have any serious side effects, and the most well-known is gonna be Rogaine. It's a foam that you apply, but there's also serums. You just gotta be careful not to get it in your eye. Sometimes people will apply it, you know, going back. Um, Finistride is by prescription only, but you can now get it online um, through Keeps, or you can get it, um, 
generic drug.com where they ship you certain drugs, you can get it from there. It's an oral prescription medication for men only. Um, Finasteride is more effective and convenient than minoxidil, but there's a lot of side effects. Possible side effects include weight gain and loss of sexual function. There's also some very serious side effects that we're now seeing with Finasteride. I have to find the story if I can post it in the link down below, but someone who I know really well was affected by this drug, and that's why I tend to tell people, please, please, please research this heavily before you make that informed choice to try it. Women may not use this um, because it, if you are pregnant, it is a strong potential for birth defects. Um, there's also surgical options that treat alopecia. There are hair transplants where they remove small sections of hair, including the follicle, papilla, and hair bulb from areas where there's a lot of hair in the back, and they transplant it to the bald area. Um, only a licensed surgeon can perform this. We're not gonna be performing this in the salon for obvious reasons. Um, and the surgeries that are necessary to achieve this range in cost from $8,000 to over $200. Um, hairstylists can offer um, different uh, procedures to treat this, such as extensions, special haircuts. There's special sprays and like, you know, there's that one shaking thing you can do that uses fibers to conceal it. Uh, so it's important to um, do extra classes in this if you want to specialize in hair loss. So you'll do like, you know, scientific classes. You might do some trichology classes. Do a lot of wig and extension classes. There was an expo I went to in November about wigs and extensions. I learned so much about um, treating hair loss. Um, hair loss is a disorder. It's not a disease. And, the, you know, obviously we talked about this before. Disorder is something that you do not um, catch. It is something that is there and you have to learn how to work around it. So you can work with disorders. So I'm gonna have you guys take a five minute break and then I'm gonna delve into the disorders of the hair.